you know what? Joining us now, the color analyst on the Oregon State Beavers radio network. Yesterday, I was reading, I don't know if it was in The Athletic or ESPN, you know, everybody's having their conference spring meetings. In fact, I talked to Coach Gundy for a little bit yesterday, Mike Gundy, about the spring meetings, and he was getting in a workout back on uh, campus. But, um, you know, uh, the Pac-12 talked about uh, having a conference-only 11-game schedule. That's just an option. Uh, Clay Helton, I think, the coach at USC, was the uh, coach that was being quoted on it and was being asked about it. Um, but Oklahoma State is scheduled to open with Oregon State on Thursday, September 3rd. I'm kind of looking forward to that and enjoyed the trip to Corvallis. And like I said, Jim Wilson, the color voice on the Oregon State Network, joins us now. Jim, first of all, hope everything's well with you and the Oregon State family, your broadcast team, everybody. Well, it's been some very, very trying times, but we're all hanging in there and just uh, like you crossing our fingers and hoping we can get back to playing some football. Yeah, Chad Weiberg, uh, the deputy athletic director at Oklahoma State that that uh, really is involved heavily in football scheduling, was on with us oh, about, I think it was a week ago last Friday, and uh, we were talking about things, and I said, well, you know, Oregon State's a long way away, and, and we've heard a lot of things from the state of Oregon, from the governor up there, and I said, what, what, what do you know about Oregon State and maybe their willingness to come down and play that game with all, you know, all things considered with the COVID-19. And Chad said, you know, I, I got in contact with them a week or two ago just to see what their, you know, uh, temperature was on everything. And the feeling I got from the folks at Oregon State is if we're playing football, they plan on being in Stillwater to, uh, you know, to abide by the, the contract. Again, we just don't know. But he said they, Oregon State's enthusiastic about playing that game. There's no question that uh, the universities, and I think this is probably true of the universities across the board, but both Oregon State and Oregon have come out publicly and said, we will have students in the fall and we're going to be run up and running. But they have to. This is a financial situation that's very critical for, I'm not talking about just Oregon and Oregon State. A lot of universities need students in the fall, and that would mean football as well. But the governor is singing a different tune, and I think that's going to be the where the rubber hits the road is you have governors that are very restrictive. The governor of Oregon came out and said that there'll be no large gatherings through September, which means you know Oregon State could actually go on the road, but I don't know how they gather a team and, and play football if there's no gatherings. And, of course, the Ducks uh, down the road are supposed to host Ohio State in the first week of September, so... I think it's going to be where the governor's uh, way in is going to be very interesting in all this. Yeah, and, and when you look at it, too, I know that uh, Larry Scott, the commissioner of the Pac-12, you know, he, you know he, he's he got a tough battle there. He's trying to you – know, and same thing in the Big 12. Everybody's battling with that behemoth at the SEC, and I got news for everybody. They're going to play football in the SEC, whether anybody else does or not, because I don't think down there they care. I don't think they care about the threat of the COVID-19. I think in the SEC, um, you know, the word is they, they worship twice a week, once on Saturday at the school of their choice and once on Sunday at the church of their choice. And I don't think they're going to give up that football day of worship for COVID-19. Yeah, I, I don't disagree. It's it, it, The whole thing, and, and I don't mean to use the, this word, but it, there's been a herd mentality. Once you see one, one entity do something, then it was just a question of when the next entity would do it. So like the state of Washington shut down their schools. It wasn't three days later, the state of Oregon shut down their schools. And then just uh, the, I think, what was it? What league? I think college basketball shut down. Then it was the NBA that shut down. Everybody just, if somebody's doing it, then uh, we all got to do it. So that might work uh, for all of us. On the flip side, if the SEC says, we're playing football and everybody looks around, well, why aren't we then? And so I, I, I think, uh, I believe there's going to be football in the fall, but I, I do I believe that there is going to be an adjusted schedule sort. Yeah, I kind of, I, I kind of agree with you, which means this game between you know the 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 two orange and blacks, Oklahoma State and, and Oregon State, 
you know, my hope is that if they don't play it this year uh, with the contract, they'll move it down the road. Oklahoma State does have a home and home coming up here in about five or six years with Oregon and uh, would certainly, you know, love to to see Oregon State return that game and come down here. I know there's all kinds of issues with, you know, when we were up there for that opener, students aren't even on campus with the late start with the schools on the West Coast primarily. But I thought it was a good atmosphere. I enjoyed being up there. I enjoyed going to Corvallis. We stayed in in Eugene, so we got to spend some time there as well. But, um, and I thought that night, um, I I know that Jonathan Smith has got a, a lot of work to do. I think a lot of that got done last year. The Beavers were drastically improved. And let me tell you something. They didn't hesitate uh, punching the Cowboys in the mouth right off the bat in that game. And, uh, again, Oklahoma State's offense was a little too explosive, I think, for the uh, Beavers. But uh, your offense was very impressive that night. Yeah, in fact, the Beavers, that, that game was the worst defensive performance of the year for Oregon State. And I think people walked away from that game thinking, oh, no, because the in Jonathan Smith's first year, the, the defense was – was very poor, very, very poor. They scored some points on offense. So in year two, last year when the two met, uh, the offense was, was good, as you said, but the defense never did stop Oklahoma State. But I remember on the broadcast saying, hey, look, you just got to know that they're facing an offense that may be as good as they see all year. And I was saying that, you know, I was telling people way back then, I thought uh, uh, Chuba Hubbard was, was as good as there was in the country as a runner. And, and then a quarterback that day, uh, I think he was a redshirt freshman at the time. He was tremendous. He was, he had a great game. I know that he didn't end up having the kind of year that he had. Uh, but at that day, he was I mean, his rushing, his running skills to me were, were were really a difference maker. And he threw the ball well that day. So um, Oregon State will be better on defense. There's no question. Each year they they got better last year and, and played some really good defense at times during the year. And they've just got better players now, and they'll they'll make another step forward enough to go to Stillwater and uh, and win. I don't know. I, I would expect that Oklahoma State would be about a two touchdown to eighteen point favorite in that game, and that 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 would be a tough tough road to hope. But Oregon State will score points this year. Well, and, and you're right. Spencer Sanders had his best game of the year. Um, now, he, he played well in other games, but, uh, you know, for, for a freshman, his first start, uh, he came up big, and, and some of his hiccups, which you expect with a freshman quarterback, came a little bit later on in the schedule. Now, you mentioned Chuba, and I'll, I'll say this, and this might make you and some of the Oregon State fans uh, feel a little bit better about last year, but maybe not feel as good about this year <laughs> since Chuba decided to come back. Um, I've been a big Chuba fan since they since they signed him. And now that I've had a chance to see him as much as I have, not just in games, but in practice, Chuba Hubbard's the best running back Oklahoma State's had since Barry Sanders. And they've had some very good ones since. But, uh, you know, Chuba's, Chuba's the best I've seen since Barry Sanders. And uh, – that's that's saying a lot. We don't throw the Barry Sanders name around in comparisons very often, but um, yeah, Chuba's maybe He's not big too, right? How big is he? Chuba's uh, bigger. I mean, Chuba is now. What he did in the off season is he dropped about three or four pounds, and uh, and then he spent the first part of the COVID nineteen. It hit when spring break was here at OSU. He and uh, one of the linebackers went up to Baltimore. And they spent almost the whole time with Justice Hill, a former back from OSU that's with the Ravens. And they were able to work out with, with Justice in, in Baltimore. So um, Chuba's actually tried to thin up just a little to maybe kick another a, a little bit faster, you know, speed. Um, but Tylen Wallace is back coming off the ACL. But I, I'd rather talk about what Oregon State. I know you lost Luton. And let me tell you something. That kid really impressed me that night. I thought, yeah, hey, it, this Jake it, Luton guy is—he's pretty dang good, and I think he's got a chance to make it on Sundays. 
Uh, he went on to have a good year. He was, I think, 28 touchdowns, three interceptions on the season, mm. uh, throwing for over 3,000 yards. He, he had himself a very, very good year. He had two, in my mind, bad halves, and that's really about the, the only hiccup in his uh, entire season. He did get drafted in the sixth round, and so I, I think, like you said, he's got a chance to stick. Uh, so they lose him, and the, the quarterback is going to be a kid named Tristan Jebbia. He transferred from Nebraska two years yeah, ago. Yeah, I know him. So he's been he's been sitting for two years. He he came over and redshirted, uh, so he sat the first year, but showed well. And then last year, it, it, people thought that he was going to be the quarterback, but but Luton beat him out, and so he's ready, and he's going to be the guy they brought in a JC guy. They they have some competition, but there, but Jebbia is going to end up, and so I think. The key is not going to be the talent level of quarterback. It's going to be the experience level of quarterback. And as you know, that's that, that's a big, big, big deal. Well, and on the defensive side, I, I know they lost some seniors, but they return. It looks like they return a lot of talent over there. And won't this be? Was was Tim Tivisar in his first year as DC last year? Yeah, that was his. It was his second year. Second and the year, first, okay. The first year was is statistically as bad as Oregon State's been defensively yeah. in, in, in 100 years. But you could see it. It was really a bland thing. What they did is they didn't gum it up or game it up in any way. They just they just played base defense that year, and teams killed them. Uh, and they just wanted – he just came and he wanted these kids to learn how to play. And that the second year, then, once they had that foundation, they started doing some things and – and building on that foundation, and they, they got so much better. And the losses this year are minimal. They are talent-wise, they're clearly a notch better coming up this year. Plus, it's the third year playing for a lot of those guys. Well, and I, I was I was impressed going in last year during fall camp, following all the uh, interviews and and all the things Jonathan Smith had to say about his football program heading into it. Uh, it reminds me, uh, I, I think, I don't think we're going to see Coach Smith, uh, you know, grow a mullet and he might not be as, as outspoken as, as the head coach here, but it reminds me a little bit of that being a former quarterback, uh, his alma mater, uh, you know, you can tell he cares a ton about building Oregon State and that he's not looking somewhere else for another job. This is the job he wants. It's his alma mater. So it reminds me a little bit of what uh, of the situation with Oklahoma State with Mike Gundy, who's now heading into his uh, 15th year. I think you hit the nail on the head with that. One, one of the, the big, you know, Jonathan Smith is a real down-to-earth guy. He's not flamboyant like, like Gundy, and he's like you said, he's not going to grow a, a, a mullet. But the, the rest of it is, is spot on because Jonathan Smith was a beaver. He was a quarterback. This is the job he wants. And I will say this, that one of the strengths of the beaver football team is the culture. He came in year one. It was all about getting guys that wanted to play, that played hard, recruiting his own type of guys that want to be beavers. And it showed somehow it, it, the, the positive culture actually showed on the field in year one. It was really obvious in year two. They had a, a hiccup in Hawaii that could have tore a couple of, you know, a, a lot of teams that I've seen up. This team just, just moved right past it with, with internal leadership. And, and uh, uh, I think that's been Jonathan Smith's best quality right now. So heading into year three is the job he's done, flipping the culture at Oregon State and now having guys that all want to be there and play hard. Jim Wilson with us, uh, color voice uh, analyst on the uh, Oregon State Beavers radio network. We had a chance to meet those guys uh, last year in Corvallis and enjoyed it, enjoyed the enjoyed the trip up there. All right, let's get back. We're going to revert back and finish up again with the schedule. Uh, I'm assuming you saw some of the same stuff I did, and you just mentioned you think it may be some sort of modified or abbreviated schedule. Down here, we're hearing a lot about maybe an October start and playing, you know, primarily conference games only. Big 12's at a little bit of a disadvantage because numbers-wise, it's not the Big 12, it's 10, which means you'd have nine conference games. But the latest thing I've heard is maybe those games and one non-conference game, and the easy one for Oklahoma State would be Tulsa that they have scheduled. It's just up the road a little bit. But 
what did you think of what you were hearing yesterday or earlier from the Pac-12? And and um, and have you heard anything from Coach Smith on on maybe what his feelings are about how to attack this season? You're, you're never going to hear anything breaking from Jonathan Smith. This <laughs> He plays it about as close to the vest as, as he can. He, he runs the company line. Um, I, the things that I'm I'm hearing all the things that you just mentioned. Some of the uh, league game only or late start and uh, uh, playing games without fans. Those 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 are the kind of things that are that are being thrown around. Um, I've gotten to the point probably where I pay less attention to the day to day. Uh, on all of that, this stuff's going to play out, and it doesn't matter how much, how nervous I get about having a football season. It's going to happen when it happens. So I, I, I'm going to just confess that I, I've not really, I, I can't stay with it the day to day of the rumors and the noise about what what may happen. So that part of it, I, I've tried to stay away from. Yeah, Jim, we went through the Big Twelve with a lot of our, uh, a lot of my compadres that are at the different radio networks and uh, one of the things we asked about is you know just what's it like in their community and and what's it like right now and we're getting you several weeks after we went around the big 12 you know I had a chance to to be up there and and for the first time see Eugene and and Corvallis what's it like in your community I mean are, are people wearing masks is is uh, is it uh, still shelter in place What's what's the atmosphere and what are the policies going on right now in the Corvallis area? Uh, the policies are pretty pretty much uh, uh, shelter in place, but there has been some relaxation in the last week or so of some some different aspects of of business. But let me, let me say this: um, Oregon is one of the states with the fewest uh, casualties and infection rate, all of those. They're very, very low on the on the chart. I think fortieth or something in the of the state. Um, you go to Corvallis, it's a small college community, and if you drive around you'd think that everything was normal, quite frankly. There's people bustling around and all there, there's not but you're not going if you went inside a restaurant you wouldn't find much. But it really you just drive around, you see healthy people moving around. But the other day I went downtown Portland uh, for appointment, and I was dry. It was a ghost town. I've never seen. There was more people in seventy thousand population Corvallis than I saw in all of downtown Portland, which is you know uh, five hundred thousand. So it, it's it's really it was really weird to me to see. And I think that's maybe the case is that the bigger cities are uh, have turned a little bit uh, ghost townish, and boy, it was really it was just odd to see. Well, Jim, I appreciate you coming on and hope everything stays well since it sounds like Oregon's in great shape as far as uh, being on the on the lighter side of the, the COVID-19, uh, you know, uh, people coming down with it and the stats on it. Uh, and I will say this, too. Uh, I don't know if we're going to get to see a, a rematch of the two OSUs. Um, but I hope the athletic directors get their heads together. And, and if it's not this year, uh, we certainly want to pay you guys back for the hospitality up there. I enjoyed it in Corvallis. And and uh, you guys have a beautiful campus, beautiful area up there. And uh, would love to uh, love for you guys to come down here and see Stillwater in Oklahoma State. So whatever ends up happening, best to you. If we see you, great. Uh, it'll be on a Thursday night. It'll be one of the first college football games of the season, so I think people will be pretty cranked up. But if we don't see you, hopefully we'll see you down the road. Yeah, all Beaver Nation wants to get out to Boone Pickham Stadium and, and see what it's all about and and uh, play a football team that we know is going to be probably a top 25 team going in. Well, Jim, appreciate it, and uh, best to you. Thank you so much. All right, uh, Jim Wilson from the Oregon State Beavers Network. And